I'm everybody. I'm going to mute everybody's microphones right now, except for uh, the clergy, so that we have uh, don't have too many uh, echoes going on. Don't uh, don't turn on bills. Fred, did you turn off bills? No. He's, uh, he is, is safe. Okay, good. No, we're getting an echo in the background. Yeah, it could be coming from someplace else. Okay, well, wait until I speak. Oh, for one... That's all there is to hear right now. Okay, are, are we starting? Almost there. Okay, I think we got it. So we'll give this a shot. What? What? And we'll begin with our opening hymn. Shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, 
and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before, before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, God and we are, are the his people of his pasture, pasture and, the and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory, Glory to, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The, the Lord, Lord is full of compassion and mercy. And mercy. Come, let, Come us let us adore him. him. Let us pray Psalm 130. Out of the depths have, have I called, called to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear my voice. voice. Let, Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, if you Lord, Lord, were to note what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there, For there is forgiveness with you, therefore, therefore you shall be feared. I wait, I wait for the Lord. Lord. My soul waits for him. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord. More than watchmen for the morning. More than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Glory, Glory to, the to the Father, and, and to the, the Son, and to the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, it as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Old Testament book of Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and took me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were many lying in the valley, and they were flogging them. said to me, mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked and there were sinews on them and flesh had come upon them and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, 
and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. And I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together at Canticle 12. Glorify the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Praise, Praise him, him and highly, highly exalt, exalt him, forever. him forever. In the, In the firmament, firmament of his power, power glorify the Lord. Praise, Praise him and highly exalt, exalt him, forever. him forever. Let the Let earth glorify the Lord. Praise, Praise him and highly exalt, exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, all mountains, mountains and hills, and all the groves upon the earth. Praise, Praise him and highly exalt him forever. forever. Glorify the Lord, O springs of water, and seas and streams, O wells and all the hills of the waters. All birds of the air, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O beasts of the wild, and all you flocks and herds. O men and women everywhere, glorify the Lord. Praise, Praise him and highly exalt, exalt him forever. Let the, the people, people of God glorify the Lord. Praise, Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O priests and servants of the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O spirits and souls of the righteous. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. You that are holy and humble of heart, glorify the Lord. Praise him, Praise him and highly exalt, exalt him forever. forever. Let, us Let us glorify the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Spirit. Praise, Praise him, him and highly exalt him forever. In the firmament of his power, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the Gospel according to John 11, 1 through 45. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you. And are you going there again? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had been already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind, blind man have kept this man from dying? 
Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and the stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Let us pray together, Canticle 13. Glory to, to you, Lord, Lord God, God of our, our fathers. fathers. You, you are, are worthy, worthy of praise. Glory to you. you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise to and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths. In the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory, Glory to you, Father, Father Son, and Holy Spirit. Spirit. We, will we will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Help us, O Lord, to be masters of ourselves that we may become the servants of others. Take our minds and think through them. Take our lips and speak through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, you're already seated. Okay. There is an Irish folk song that was written in the 19th century called Tim Finnegan's Wake tells the story of a drunken Irishman named Tim Finnegan, who one day fell from a ladder and broke his skull. He is given a typical Irish wake at his home, where there is lots of food and even more drink. As Tim's friends become more and more tipsy, they get sentimental and then argumentative. Soon a brawl begins, and one of the combatants throws a bottle of Irish whiskey in Gaelic it means the water of life. They throw it at Tim, at someone else, ducks, and the whiskey spills all over Tim. Tim revives and upbraids his friends for whis wasting good whiskey, asking them, Tell him in jail, do you think I'm dead? The song is a funny little ditty, but it deals with a serious subject, death, and rebirth. It's not clear whether Tim was just unconscious and revives, or if he really is dead and miraculously comes back to life. Either way, the key element in the story is the water of life, which revives Tim Finnegan. It is symbolic of a force beyond human striving, which brings new life out of what seems like death. As Christians, we would say that this force is God, acting through both God's word and spirit. Death and rebirth is a theme that can be found throughout world literature and music. While some stories or songs may be more about the death of institutions, groups, or cultures, the rebirth remains constant. 
the reconstruction of what once was destroyed, often in a new and better form. The myth of the phoenix, a bird who resurrects itself from its own ashes, is perhaps the icon of this theme. In this morning's scripture readings, we have two stories which deal with the theme of death and rebirth. Our first reading from Ezekiel, a text which is always read at the Easter Vigil, tells the story of dry bones in the valley of death. The bones are the scattered remains of human beings who were once alive but are now dead. This imaginative scene is given to Ezekiel in a vision by God who asks him the pointed question, can these bones live? The answer, of course, is yes. And through the actions of both God's word and spirit, the same Hebrew word which is used for breath, the bones come together and create new life. The scene is reminiscent of God's creation of the first human in Genesis chapter 2 when God sculpted Adam from the earth and then breathed his own breath into him, giving him life. God interprets this prophetic prophetic vision for Ezekiel, explaining that the bones represent the shattered hopes of Israel, which has been in captivity at the hands of the Babylonians. But through the actions of a compassionate God, they will have new life back in their own country. The gospel reading is an even more pointed story about the restoration of life. It is a typical pericope from the fourth gospel in which the author recounts a detailed story which draws together a variety of themes and continues the arc of the gospel as it moves inexorably towards Jesus' death and resurrection. In the A cycle of Lenten readings, we have been following this arc in John's Gospel for the past three weeks. In his interaction with Nicodemus, Samaritan woman at the well, and the man born blind, Jesus intimates that something new is coming, a new form of life, that respectively involves being born again of water and the spirit, worshiping God not on a mountain or in Jerusalem, but in spirit and in truth, and receiving not only physical sight, but also spiritual sight. What unites all of these texts is the movement from the physical to the spiritual, an invitation to participate in the very life of God. As St. Paul wrote in his letter to the church in Rome, to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. Romans chapter 8, verse 6. Like the previous three stories, today's lection gives us an extended narrative which includes many details that are both realistic and symbolic. If I were teaching a Bible class, I could easily spend an hour explicating this text. But within the confines of a, of a homily, I'll only talk about those elements which support this theme of death and rebirth. Many scholars see in this story a foreshadowing of Jesus' own death and resurrection. While the text certainly supports this interpretation, it's not the main theme of the story. The key to understanding this story is found early in the text when Jesus learns that Lazarus is ill. He tells his disciples, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. This may seem like a strange statement since Lazarus does indeed die, but his death is not the end of the story. In fact, 
is death and restoration of life, well, at the heart of the story, are not the primary reason why the evangelist includes his story in the gospel. Following the arc of the gospel, the story is a reflection on the way in which God's glory is revealed through the words and actions of Jesus. After delaying his trip to Bethany for two days, Jesus tells his disciple, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. This is a story about God's initiatives and human's response. This theme becomes even clearer when Jesus arrives at the tomb of Lazarus and prays, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so they may believe that you sent me. What unites these three utterances is Jesus' conviction that God is working through him and that believing in him will lead to new life. Jesus' clearest statements in this regard is the affirmation he makes to Martha. I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Nine times in John's Gospel, Jesus makes a statement about himself, which echoes the I am statement, which God made to Moses in the story of the burning bush. Jesus has previously said, I am the bread of life, I am the good shepherd, and I am the light of the world. All of these statements point to God's power working in Jesus, symbolically indicating the ways in which God's love is offered to the followers of Jesus, and through them works to transform the world and bring about God's kingdom. What we heard today is the second to last of these I am statements. And it is both the most mysterious and the most far reaching of them all. The grammar and syntax of the Greek text are unequivocal. Jesus does not merely bring about resurrection and new life. He is the embodiment of both of these things. The following assertions connects his identity to the faith of his disciples. The Greek literally reads, whoever believes in me, even though he is dying, shall he live. And whoever is, um, excuse me, I gotta, whoever is living and believes in me, shall not die forever. Again, there's a contrast between physical life and the spiritual life, which begins with the faith in Jesus and continues after death. An important theme, which also unites all of these stories that we have been considering, is the time gap that occurs between God's revelation and the human response. In the case of Nicodemus, it is not until late in the gospel that we learn about Nicodemus's new faith in Jesus. For the woman at the well, it is only after Jesus tells her about her past life that she begins to suspect that he is the Messiah. And faith for the man born blind comes about only after his continuing conversations with the Pharisees. And in this morning's text, both Martha and Mary confess their belief only after listening to Jesus. And the faith of the crowd occurs only after Jesus restores the life of Lazarus. This time gap between revelation and faith is what is often referred to as liminal time, a transitional period that involves waiting and watching. 
can sometimes include confusion and anxiety. We are now living in liminal time. Our lives have been changed radically by the coronavirus. The spread of the virus has made life on this planet both dangerous and unpredictable. Our ability to interact with one another has been severely curtailed and our options for involvement with the outside world are now limited. These are anxious times and we don't know where to look for answers to our most pressing questions. When will life get back to normal? In fact, what will normal look like after the virus has been contained? While God may seem to be missing during this crisis, in reality, God is in our midst, hidden within the dailiness of life, calling us to a new future filled with the new life of God's love. Over the centuries, many voices drawn from our Christian tradition remind us of this. One of the best known quotes of St. Julian of Norwich, a medieval mystic states, all shall be well, all shall be well, all manner of things shall be well. Henry Nouwen, a 20th century mystic, once wrote, it is central in the biblical tradition that God's love for his people should not be forgotten. It should remain with us in the present. When everything is dark, when we are surrounded by despairing voices, when we do not see any exits, then we find salvation in a remembered love, a love that is not simply a wistful recollection of a bygone past, but a living force that sustains us in the present. And St. Paul wrote in his letter to the Romans, we exalt in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance, and perseverance, proven character, and proven character, hope. And this hope does not disappoint us because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Remembering God's love is our greatest strength in this present moment. Hope is our greatest weapon against anxiety and believing that God will make all things new in Jesus Christ is the greatest answer to our questions about an unknown future. As we continue to be church outside of our building, communicating and supporting each other through phone calls, texts, emails, and social media, May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Amen. Let us affirm our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in, in God, God, the Father, the Father Almighty, Almighty, creator, creator of, heaven of heaven and earth. And earth. I believe, I believe in, in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe, I believe in the, in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection, the resurrection of the body, body and, and the life, life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. 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 Let us pause for a moment for some announcements. Um, first of all, it's great to have all of you here. Um, 
we are indeed in a new time and to be able to share worship um, is really important we are indeed the building may be closed but our hearts are still open we really are living into this new reality of what it means to be church in the world We've known for a long time that the church is beyond its buildings, but it really is inviting us to fully embrace that. Um, in the midst of a few things, what I want to share with you is that we have we are developing programming to happen during the week. Um, we're going to start this Wednesday with a program that I'm going to lead um, and invite all of you to called Finding Faith in the Midst of COVID-19. And the easiest, the way that we're going to be able to do this is through Zoom. So if you happen to be on Facebook Live and don't understand Zoom, um, do either text me or um, call the office and leave a message. And we have a team that is able to contact people and help you get on Zoom because Zoom just is the easiest way to do it. And I don't, I don't think Facebook Live would work for this anyway. So it's on Wednesdays at 10 o'clock. Um, I encourage you to, to join in. Uh, we need to be with each other and it gives us an opportunity to talk and to, to share and to um, look at some scripture in relation to all of this. So that's what's happening this Wednesday. And then, um, Jesse, and are you starting your class on Friday? Can you speak? Um, yes, I was uh, hoping that Bill would also be joining in. We haven't talked to each other about it. We kind of, sort of, <laughs> but yes, we're planning. Okay, this will all come out in a parish post, which will come out in the next day or two, and you will click on it just the way you did for this too. Um, so anyway, that's the, the, what we're working towards. As you know, next week is Holy Week. So we will have a Palm Sunday service. Um, and then actually probably what we're going to do is encourage you to look for um, worship in sort of the grander outdoors out there, which is, I don't mean physically outdoors. I mean, you know, the cathedral, the various cathedrals and everything. But there'll be more information about that in the near future. Um, also, uh, there is coffee hour immediately following this. And again, this is Zoom related. Um, so if you are on Zoom and you got on this worship service via the parish post, then go back to the parish post and you will find the click for the um, live for coffee hour um, as well. The what you have to do is click out of this one before you can click into the next one. And the next one actually doesn't start until noon um, because we had to make sure this one was over before that one begins. They can so, go in early. Um, it, it, I can't go in early until I've ended this meeting, but everyone else can. Okay, great, great. Anything else, Fred? Nothing tech-related at this time. Just uh, do reach out to reach out to us if you're having trouble with it and we will make sure that you can do it if you are having symptoms or you're worried about someone please do let us know um, the prayer list continues um, daughters of king and then the clergy also um, pray for people so some people don't want to be known by name but um, the clergy list um, will keep your information confidential plus we want to be able to reach out to you in whatever way we can. We've been calling people. Um, you may not have gotten our calls yet, but feel free to call us and know that we are um, making our way through the list. It, it's interesting. People are having very deep and long conversations, both with, with us as well as with each other, and that's really immensely important. Take care of your neighbors. Take care and pray deeply for all of the first responders. Um, for all those in need, and um, also um, Linda's posting that there is Complin available, um, on, I think it's King FM at 98.1 at 9.30 this evening, um, and you know, it's, it's beautiful. If you've never actually been, it's just wonderful to hear it. 
Um, and the National Cathedral has beautiful services too. So check out Facebook. Check out Facebook uh, St. Mary's Parishioners, um, which is you can get there off, off of the St. Mary's page. And there are a lot of resources. And please do share with each other. Feel free to post on to that as well. Um, I, are there any birthdays or anniversaries? If there are, I don't have the prayer in front of me. Jesse, can you lead it or somebody else lead it? I don't hear any birthdays. Okay. <laughs> Happy birthday. I have a prayer book on the other side of the table. <laughs> anybody happen to know what page? Uh, uh, first off, do we have, who's, anybody want to wave their hand, birthdays or anniversaries? Betty, were you waving? Nope. Frank? Perfect. Just pray it. <laughs> Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, May your peace, which passes all understanding, abide with them all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I had almost memorized, but not quite, and it was not in front of me. Offer your gifts, O Lord, to, the, to our loving and gracious Savior. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The prayers. I think I lost my internet connection. Okay, I see people moving again. My internet connection is unstable. I apologize for that. <laughs> so, we're ready for the prayers, Marianne? Yes. yes. Okay. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy Lord, upon Lord, have us. mercy upon us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done, done on, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against, against us. us. And lead us, lead us not into not temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever, forever and, and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and, and grant, grant us, us your, your salvation. salvation. O Lord, save the state, and, and mercifully, mercifully hear us when we call upon you. you. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, and, and make, make your chosen people joyful. O Lord, save your people, and, and bless, bless your inheritance. inheritance. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For, For only in you can we live, we live in, safety. in safety. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and, and sustain, sustain us with, with your, your Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Almighty God, you alone can bring order to the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through jesus christ our lord amen keep us god good lord under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low that we may rejoice in your comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.
God of all ages and all people, we offer our prayers. We pray for the church in our community and throughout the world, for our presiding Bishop Michael, our diocesan Bishop Greg, for our sisters and brothers in churches, homes, hospitals, and streets everywhere, and for all who desire to know and worship you. Dear God, as you live and work in the world, you tend and care for all people as a loving shepherd cares for their sheep. We pray that you would come to our aid in the midst of the global pandemic of COVID-19. For those who are sick with the virus, bring your comfort and healing. May you bring rest and, renew and a renewed strength to weakened bodies. May the confidence and assurance that only you can come, can give in troubled minds and fearful hearts. Let the work of your hands be seen in the medical care that all who are ill receive that it may bring them a full return to health. As you work in and through modern medicine, continue to bless and strengthen the hands and hearts of those who practice it. Give strength of body and mind to all nurses, doctors, first responders, and other medical professionals. And we pray, Give that same strength and endurance to those who labor to manufacture all of the equipment needed in the fight against this pandemic. Be with factory workers, researchers, and all who labor to keep safe those who come into contact with the virus. As families suffer through the illness of those they love and send them your peace, Grant them sleep when it will not come. Send them abundance when assurance when confidence fails. Give them hope in their hearts where there is despair. Gracious God, a shelter in place and stay at home orders become our new normal. Give your presence to those who find themselves alone. May we not forget that your presence can come to those who need it through the outreach we all can undertake to reach them. As those who love be become separated from us due to quarantines, give us all the strength to know that whether or not we can see each other, we are all held in the safety of the palm of your hand. In a particular way, we pray for children everywhere whose lives have been totally changed by the times we are living in. Let them know that you will keep them safe when they are afraid. As more and more people lose work and income due to the need to stop the spread of this pandemic, we pray that you would provide for them and their families. Help them to not give in to fear and hopelessness in the face of the current times. Help them to know that you are fighting for them and their safety. Help us all to do whatever we can to assist our neighbors. We pray that your wisdom would be with the leaders of all nations, with the members of the military, all public officials and other policymakers. Make May they heed the advice of the medical and scientific experts in this crisis. Give them the wisdom and foresight to make good policy that will bring relief to the sick, the unemployed, and all those whose lives have been shaken by these times. Wherever we are and whatever we do, we pray that you would stay with us, dear Lord. Help us all to face our daily lives with the confidence that you walk beside us through all things. All these prayers we gather together in the words of the grace as we pray. May, May the, the grace, grace of our, of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ and the, the love, love of God, God 
and the, the fellowship, fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with, with us all ever now and, and evermore. evermore. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, Almighty God, God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not, not only with, with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time, with one accord, to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May Christ give you a pure heart that you may see him, a humble heart that you may hear him, a heart of love that you may serve him, and a heart of faith that you may abide in him forever. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Take care, everybody.